Hello and welcome to Dittmer Knittery with Maybelline the Chihuahua. Maybelline likes to be on my lap as much as she can and who's to discourage that? My name is Bev. I think I already said welcome to Dittmer Knittery. My name is Bev and you can find contact information for me in the description box below. And should I mention anything else during this podcast that you might need information for, you'll find that in the description box too. Or you can comment or email me anytime. If you are a new viewer, I hope you'll stick around and watch some videos. I've been doing um, kind of a series that includes some machine knitting. If you haven't been watching those, I hope you'll go back and catch up. Thank you so much to all of you who have been here before. I'm so happy you're back. I made some clips this morning. I was working on the project on the knitting machine, the May Day bag project, and I was working and I did some clips and I'm going to show you those in just a few minutes. But first, I thought I would take time to show you some felting results of other projects I've been working on meanwhile, because Although this series of videos about the machine knitting and the knitting machine, although this has gone on for some time, several weeks, in fact, everything I've done on the knitting machine that you've seen so far from the beginning of the series, I could have done on the machine in one day. So this work can go very quickly, but I've taken my time to be able to show you each step. So let me show you some um, bags that I felted. These were None of these were made on the machine. And then I will show you some clips from this morning of my work on the machine. I have three bags to show you that I've felted. This first one, I've made something similar before. This is Tunisian crochet brick stitch with two colors. And this, it looks a little lumpy there because there's a pocket inside there. So... That will show once there is, um, once the bag is being carried and there are things in the bag because there is a nice pocket in there and it's kind of large, the pocket itself and the bag. It's a nice large bag with an adjustable strap and the neutral color is fisherman wool and I even have the ball band and some yarn of this other color. Um, this is the ball band, kaleidoscope yarn. Here's the other side. I think it says elegant yarns made in China. 100%, it says 100% wool on the kaleidoscope side. And it is in fact, 100% wool and felt well. I don't see a color name on here, but I'm almost sure that when I looked at it online, the color name was Hummingbird. So this is what I have left. I had two skeins. I made two bags, very much alike. And this is what I have left of the two skeins. The other bag that I made somewhat like this, I also used the Fisherman Wool. So I recommend this yarn for felting. It's a, a medium weight yarn. I would call it a four weight. Really enjoyed working with it, and this bag worked up really nicely. I'm quite happy with it. It needs a button. I need to shop for buttons. And believe it or not, I can't, I, I can't find my box of buttons. I have a big box of buttons. I remember relocating it, but <clears throat> it's someplace so safe that I can't find it at the moment. I'm sure I will. I'm not really worried about it, but it's, it's kind of funny. Anyway, on to the next bag. Uh, another felted bag. This was knitted by hand, and it's, it's quite a small bag, meant to be like wallet size um, crossbody strap, so a nice bag for carrying your wallet or your phone, your keys, some small things, like really nice to go to an arts festival and carry this along with you. It also needs a button, and the strap is not adjustable. It's just a very long crossbody bag, unknown wool yarn. This variegated, 
and then I used a solid that's not even the same. Yeah, it may, it may even be the same kind of yarn. Don't remember. I make things that I don't always remember how I did it, but I had a lot of fun doing it. And it turned out nice. One more felted bag to show you. A, another one that was knit by hand. And the body of this bag, the main part of the bag, was something that I knit many years ago. I knit it in a tube with the intention of making it into a bag. So I had um, started at the bottom, knitted in the round, um, was going to seam the bottom and create a bag from it. But after I finished knitting the main part of it, I could see that the yarn, although it was a beautiful yarn, fun to work with, gorgeous colors, you'll see in a minute. Um, I could see that it was thick and thin and thick and thin, and I thought that it wasn't going to felt well. I thought that it was so thin in some places that it just wasn't going to felt well. So I set it aside to frog it because the yarn was very nice, but I never frogged it. And I think it, I mean, years, literally years, I may have moved it twice, just in my bag, my um, basket of things to frog. But anyway... I came across it a few weeks ago and got it out and thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and frog this because I really like this yarn. And then I took another look at it and I thought, with my experience at this point, these years that have passed between the time that I knit the main part of the bag and today, I have more experience. And I saw that it was probably going to felt just fine. So I closed the bottom of the bag. I made a top of the bag. I created a strap and a flap. I even put a pocket in it. Look at this cute little bag. Aren't those colors fantastic? So it's it's a, a medium to small size bag. It has um, an adjustable strap, so it could be crossbody or shoulder. Solid blue strap and flap, which is a totally different kind of yarn from what the main part of the um, bag was made from. Like I said, I found this main part of the bag, the really colorful part. I had enough left that I sewed this bottom seam. And like I said, this was knitted by hand. So I knitted it in the round, not in a long strip like I would on the machine. I created a seam in the bottom of the bag. I can't remember if I had to knit around the top. I think the top was already finished. And so I then just made the strap Knitted the strap. This is an I-cord strap. And I'm pretty sure this is Patton's Classic Wool, the blue. Made the flap. I just, I, I pick up stitches and attach the flap there. Made a pocket from the blue as well. And felted it. And I am so happy with it. <laughs> a long story about this little bag. But that's what can happen if, if, um, if we just do it and see what's going to happen. Isn't that what I say? You want to know what's going to happen? Do it. So now I have some machine knitting for you. And as you'll see, we are nearing the end of the part of this project that's going to be worked on the machine. But wait just a minute. There was one other thing I wanted to show you today. This piece here, someone gave to me. And it's, uh, it's a scarf, it's long. It's a tube, and the person that gave it to me had knit it in a memory of her dog that passed away. And when my dog passed away, she gave it to me. And I have known Pam for a while. I don't know her very well, but recently we've gotten to know each other a little bit better, and I've enjoyed spending time with her, and it was very touching that um, she gave me this thing that she knitted. Now, she is a fabulous knitter. She's English, and she learned to knit when she was four. So I will probably never understand everything she understands about knitting, hand knitting, machine knitting, um, color work, just beautiful work. And it was so touching um, that she shared that with me. And then I also wanted to mention this that's here almost all the time. This is lamb chop. This is my lamb chop. I adored, when I was a child, I adored Sherry Lewis and lamb chop. Um, there were times when I thought I might be able to marry lamb chop. I'm not sure how I imagined that working. But I do, do remember thinking that 
I would marry Lamb Top. <laughs> so silly little things, tangents, but now some machine knitting. I hope you enjoy. I am going to knit the final eight rows, add the ravel cord, add the waist yarn, and remove this project from the machine. And I thought I would give you a little overview of my area. I think I have a pretty good camera angle today. I have my, as I said, ready to knit the final rows. I have my ravel cord and my waist yarn ready to go right here. Let you see this fabric that's on the machine. Looks very nice. That's the wrong side. And then have it folded here so you can see the right side as well. See those nice machine knitted stitches and here I have the beginning stitches on a cord just holding those live stitches until I can pick them up and knit them very nearly finished with this part of this project Knit the final eight rows. And I have chosen to make stripes on this part of the bag. So I'm ending with the eight rows of the blue. Just been carrying the yarns at the side because I'll be able to capture those yarns in the seam. Last row. Got always paying attention. I'll be able to capture um, the yarns that I've carried here along the sides in the seam, and since it will be felted. That will work just fine. Another advantage of felting the project, being able to take little shortcuts like that. So I have my Ravel cord ready and I have my waist yarn ready. One row of Ravel cord, which is just a smooth yarn to create a row between the working yarn and the waist yarn. I have a little tangle in my ravel cord, so I'm going to take care of that. Got it? And then the one row of ravel cord. And then I can begin the waist yarn, which I already have threaded into the machine. Ready to go with that. So several rows of waste yarn. I'm going to create some tension over here. So I attached a clothespin. And let's come in close. I hope this works. I'm going to come in a little closer here. And I hope... This is as exciting and fun for you from your vantage point as it is for mine. This ending bit, of course, is a feeling of a little accomplishment and triumph that I made it all this way and I did it. I made something. Anyway, this is a, a large part of the project, but of course it won't be finished even when I take it off the machine here. Um, here we come with the waste yarn. And when I pause, I'm just making sure that there's a stitch on every hook and that my yarn is flowing smoothly and not tangling. 
it's worth taking a pause and taking it a little bit slowly. Here at the end, you don't want anything to go wrong and it's going well. A few more rows of this waist yarn. Just trying to angle a little bit, but I'm not letting it. If you work with yarn, you know to expect tangles and to um, take care of them as you can. Moving up the weights, always good to have your weights on the edge of your work. Create that tension you need for good stitches. Okay, I think that's adequate waist yarn, several rows, and I'm going to remove the piece from the machine. Taking off the weights because the whole thing is literally going to just fall off the machine. I'm removing the yarn from the carriage, the head, and then when I run the carriage across, it's going to remove the piece from the machine. There it is. I will pick up stitches along this final edge. That's the next thing I, I'll do. And then I'll begin um, sewing the side seams together. But first, on the machine, I'm going to make the strap and the pocket. And I will come back to show you that the pocket for the bag. I cast on 40. My bag is 56 inches, 56 stitches. You knew I meant stitches. My bag is 56 stitches wide. The pocket is 40 stitches wide. So that uh, allows ample room on the sides um, for the pocket to fit in there nicely. We'll probably knit about 60 rows for the pocket. And I think about that my bag is 89 rows long. And when I knit it by hand, I will probably add 12 to 16 rows to it. So 60 rows long for the pocket should be just about right. I'll look at it, uh, but I, I, I um, would rather err on the side of it being a little long than a little short. So I might make it longer. But again, I will be finishing it by hand. So if it needs some rows added, I'll be able to do that by hand. Um, so I'm just knitting along on this pocket. It's going to be a solid color. I'm holding two strands together of Palette Knit Picks yarn. I wasn't sure what color I was going to make the pocket, but the blue yarn was right there. That works. It will look nice in there. So I'm going to make it blue. I may, when I finish it by hand, add the top part of it that won't be sewn to the bag, the opening part, may be a different color than the blue because that helps you to see the pocket inside the bag. It makes the pocket more useful. Thanks so much for watching that. I hope it's been interesting to you. It's been so much fun for me, um, but there won't be much more knitting on this machine. As I've mentioned, I will be parting with my machine and I have another. Um, of course, there'll be a whole lot more about that in the future. Um, Maybelline was sitting here on my lap the whole time I was speaking with you. She is full of energy. She is sleek and fast and loves to run. But she also loves to be right here next to me. And I've had her for... I got her on a Friday. So yesterday will be five or six weeks that I've had her. Um, I got her... July 15th, so whatever that is, probably five weeks. I'm not going to stop and look at the calendar. Anyway, um, it's a joy to have her. She's getting along well with both of the cats. One of the cats, Georgia, um, was quite hesitant but has um, really made a connection. And although it's kind of a... a distant connection. I don't know. They, um, 
they don't dislike each other. And they sometimes do a little running and playing together and um, neither one of them would cause the other harm. And that's the most important thing. Well, I'd love for them to be best buddies. The most important thing is that I know that I can um, rest in confidence that my pets are not going to hurt each other. I'm not going to have to worry about one of the cats clawing or biting Maybelline nor Maybelline doing anything to either of those cats that would hurt them. So when they run and play, um, they have a really good time. And it appears to me that they like each other. I know that Cheeto and Maybelline like each other. You can tell that for sure. And um, Maybelline does like to bark, but from the time I brought her home and she began barking at almost everything to today, when her barking is almost completely under control, I am so happy with that progress. I have taken her out with me when I go out. I allow her others to pet her and hold her. I want her to be socialized and be a good, gentle animal. And it looks like um, we're going in the right direction. It's only been a short time, but... She's made amazing progress in, in being more calm around other people in um, unusual situations. So thank you so much to, for listening to all of that. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're watching. And I'm going to end this here and let you know that I'll see you in the next video.